moving on to our next lesson. We are now talking about job order costing system. Ano ba yung job order costing system? Start tayo with the concepts. First, job order costing system, ginagamit siya kung saan yung cost ay ina-accumulate per job or batches. Ginagamit siya ng mga kumpanya na nagpo-produce ng maliit na number or small number ng iba't ibang mga products. Heter heterogeneous ang mga products sa job order costing. At saka, nagbe-base sila sa specific customer orders na nagre-require ng special materials and labor. Ito yung best tool para ma-determine yung specific costs ng isang individual job or bawat job. Tapos, e-examine mo sila para makita kung yung mga cost na na-incur mo sa pag-produce ng mga products na yun ay pwede pang mabawasan or taasan sa mga susunod na job. Sa system na to, bawat job ay tinitreat siya as separate na cost center. Kumbaga, kanya-kanya sila. Ito yung job na to, ito lahat ng cost niya. Wala siyang pakialam sa ibang job. Ganon sila. Example ng mga company na gumagamit ng job order costing system ay construction companies, aircraft manufacturer, shipbuilders, customized machine production, customized furniture, insurance providers, software program, na mga nagde-design sila nun, printing press, repair shops, service industries like hospitals, law firms, accounting firms, advertising agencies, etc. Under job order costing system, bawat job, nagre-require sila ng iba't ibang amount ng raw materials, iba't ibang amount ng labor, at saka overhead. Kasi nga, nakadepende yon sa quality at saka specification ng mga order ni customer. Therefore, walang dalawang job ang exactly na magkatulad. Products na napoproduce talaga ay heterogeneous. Yung record keeping dito sa um, job order costing system, uh, komplikado siya or mas complicated siya kasi yung company, marami siyang napoproduce na iba't ibang product at saka services kumpara dun sa company na meron lang isang product o kaya service na pinoproduce. Ayan. Ang job order costing, dapat i-determine niya lahat ng cost na ginagamit sa pag-produce ng isang job. Kasama yung materials, yung labor, overhead. So, under ng system na to, yung materials at saka yung labor, tinitrace directly sa jobs. Tapos, yung overhead, ina-apply, kagaya nung diniscuss natin last um, lesson. So, ginagamitan ng predetermined overhead rate. Yung company na gumagamit nito, nagko-consider sila ng use ng job cost sheet. Ito yung document para matrack yung mga cost ng bawat job. Yung cost na natitrace sa mga particular job, hinahati siya by the number of units produced doon sa job para mag-arrive ka doon sa average cost per unit. Yan. So, let's try to solve the handout. Knight Company uses a job order costing system and the following information is available from its records. The company has three jobs in process. Number one, number two, and number three. Raw materials used total of 120,000 pesos. Direct labor per hour is 8.50 pesos. Tapos, overhead applied based on direct labor cost is 120%. Direct material was requisitioned as follows for each job respectively. We have 30%, 25%, and 25%. The balance of the requisitions was considered indirect. Direct labor hours per job are 2,500, 3,100, and 4,200 respectively. Indirect labor is 33,000. Other actual overhead costs total 36,000. We have six requirements. First is what is the prime cost of job one? What is the total amount of overhead applied to job two? What is the total amount of actual overhead? 
how much overhead is applied to work in process, and if job three is completed and transferred, what is the balance of work in process inventory at the end of the period if overhead is applied at the end of the period? Meaning, ano, i-apply mo siya sa end. And then, how much is the under or over applied overhead for the period? Let's solve. Let us write first labels. No, we have raw materials. <coughs> raw materials. Direct labor. And factory overhead. We also have to write the job numbers. Job 1, job number 2, and job number 3. Then, we have total. And then, here, totals then. Tapos, um, for job number 1, sabi, 30% ng raw materials ay para kay job 1. Ang raw materials natin, 120,000 times point. 30, we have 36,000 for job 1. For job number 2, we have 120,000 pa din, pero 25% lang siya. At saka si job number 3, pareho sila. 30,000. So, sulat natin. 30, 30 din kay job number 3. Tapos, we have direct labor. Sabi, Meron daw direct labor hours. For job number 1, 2,500. Tapos, meron tayong 8.50 pesos per direct labor hour. So, multiply lang. 2,500. 25 times 8.5. That is 21,250 pesos. Tapos, for job number 2, 8.5 ulit. Multiplied by... Mumultiply natin sa 3,100. We have 26,350. Multiply ulit natin si 8.5 by 42. 4,200 para kay job number 3. 4,200 times 8.50. 35,700. Pesos. Then, we have factory overhead of 120% daw ng direct labor. So, kunin natin siya sa bawat job. Times 1.20. For job number 1, 25,500. For job number 2, 26,350 yung direct labor niya. Times natin kay 1.20. 31,620. For the last job, we have uh, 35,700 times natin by 1.20. 42,840. Then, add lang natin lahat para makuha yung total. So, we have 95,5 Tapos, 31,620. Tapos, 42, 840. Ulit, 25, 5, 31, 20, 42, 840. 99,960 overhead natin. Tapos, we have, for labor, we have 21. 250, 26, 350, saka 35, 7, 83,300. Tapos we have job number 1, 2, and 3 for raw materials. We have 36, 36, tapos dalawang 30, then we have 96,000. Tapos sabi, Magkano ba yung ano uh, materials na nagamit niya daw? Sabi, 120,000 daw. Then, meron daw, ano, yung natitira, indirect. 
Ibig sabihin, overhead yon Actual overhead. Yung natira daw sa materials. Diba? 120. Tapos, ang direct material, ang nagamit niya lang ay direct, no? Ay, ang, oo, oh, oh, 96 lang. So, minus 96. So, we have 24,000 for the actual overhead. Ayan. 24. Tapos, for, and total muna natin sila. 96,000. Yung total natin sa, sa buong manufacturing. 99,960. 279,260. Tapos, yung pinaka-important na part dito is to total each job. 1, 2, and 3. So, total natin muna si job number 1. We have 36,000 for materials plus 21. 250 for labor and 25.5 for overhead. We have 82,750. For job number 2, we have 30,000 30 plus 26,350 plus 31,620. We have 87,970. Tapos, we have 30,000 for job number 3 plus 35,700. Tapos, we have 42,840. 108,540. 108,540. Then, let's see kung yung total ng tatlo horizontally, ayan, is equal sa vertical totals natin. So, 108,540 yung kay 3, kay 2 is 87, 970, and then for 1, we have 82,750. So, total is 279,260. 279,260 is the total. We'll see if it's equal. So, Yes, equal si vertical, equal si horizontal. So, tama na to. Ngayon, sagutin na natin yung questions. Pero add muna natin yung indirect labor kay actual overhead, which is 33,000. And meron pang ibang overhead, which is 36,000. Total of 69 plus 24, we have 93,000, right? 93. Ayan. So, number one question, what is the prime cost of job one? We have 36,000, 21,250. So, 57,250. For question number two, ang question, total amount of overhead applied to job two. So, eto na yun, nasagot na natin yun. 31,620. Tapos, for number 3, total amount of actual overhead, ito na yun. Si 93. Tapos, how much overhead is applied to the work in process? So, natotal na rin natin siya. That is, 99,960 pesos. Tapos, yung next is, if job number 3 daw is completed and transferred, ano daw yung balance ng work in process at the end? Si 3 lang yung nakompleto. Siya lang. Ibig sabihin, ang maiiwan na lang kay work in process is 87,970 and 82,750. Then, we will add this to 82,750 plus 87,970. That is 170,720 pesos. Tapos, for... Number 6, how much is the total ng under and over applied or over applied overhead? We have our actual overhead of 93,000. Our applied is 99,960. Obviously, we'll have um, over applied overhead kasi mas malaki si applied natin, no? 
ang over applied natin is 6,960 pesos. This is negative, no? And this is the answer for our last requirement.